Hi everyone, Diane here. Welcome to my studio. Today I am going to paint a loose floral arrangement <clears throat> in pink, peach and lilac with some soft sage greens to complement those colours. So let's get started. I'm going to be painting uh, today on a piece of Meaden Hot Press 140 pound watercolour paper, size 10 by 7. <clears throat> of course you can use any paper you like, but this is good paper. It's uh, very friendly towards watercolour paint, which is always useful. I think there's one sheet left on this block. It's always glued all the way around on the outside edge, except for a little space here where you can slide a knife in to separate it from the thick board, which is supporting um, all uh, 20 sheets of paper that are on here. When you buy a block, you need to make sure that this um, board backing is nice and thick, otherwise it would bend. But when it is nice and thick, you can't bend that. And even when the paper is wet, it won't um, uh, cockle because it's being held tight by the glue around the outside edge. Um, just in case anybody doesn't know, it has come up just recently about paper and stretching paper in order to stop it from um, buckling. Um, just to say, you do realise, I expect, that when you soak water into paper, when you soak paper with water, it stretches. So if once it's wet, you lay it on a board and you stick the outside edge down with um, that brown packing tape that you need to activate with water on the gluey side of it and then you let it dry. As it dries the paper shrinks and it pulls against the tape and it becomes tight like a drum and that means that you can paint on it without it cockling. Um, but this method of having it on a block like this saves all of those issues so you'll never get your paper cockling no matter how big the sheet. I'm going to use my Art Nouveau set, which is these colours here, um, plus um, the Craftamo brushes, the round ones, we have the 14 and the, um, the middle sized one, which is a uh, 7, I think, and the, rig the rigger. I, I'm not sure which ones of these I'll use, but probably all of them, I expect. And the Craftamo set is still available from Craftamo if you want to buy one. I uh, don't think there's very many left, so if you want one, you better, better get a wiggle on. Right, so let's see, what shall we start with? Um, the thing about this set of paints, uh, these uh, blah, 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 Art Nouveau, are, is that they are all nice pastel colours. So you've got all these pinks, you've got these colours here and, you know, they come out as peaches and pinks and stuff like that when you mix them all up. So I'm going to just relax, um, get some water on my brush and sit down as you do and hope I've turned the video on. It's so easy to have uh, technical problems. But if we pick up some of this colour here, which is a kind of ivory, and we add a little bit of this, which is, um, what is that? That is burnt sienna. And then we, and perhaps a, a little tiny bit of pink. We will end up with something approaching peach. So I don't know, let's start here with a splosh. I quite like doing sploshy paintings with not very much form. Um, and then if, when it's finished, you feel it's um, too formless, you can come in with a pen and do lots of pen work over the top. Do that. So the next colour I'm going to use, I'm going to do some pink, a pink one here. And then maybe I'll go for a slightly more yellowish ivory up here. And do some something like that. We could put a little bit of red in here if we want to. Um, how about some, some lilac, something, something soft like that. And we could do 
Um, hot press is quite nice for painting flowers. You get quite a nice, a different effect from what you get on uh, cold press paper. And you have to be a little bit patient with it and let it do its thing. In a minute, we'll start putting some leaves. Let's have another pinkish lilac. These are sort of semi-opaque, these paints. They're not completely uh, transparent, but if you use them loosely enough, They, they are transparent. A little bit of blue um, with the pink. I don't know, get kind of grayish sort of effect. Perhaps I'll drop some pink into that and let that run. That's a thought, isn't it? And then let's mix a couple of these together. Can't go far wrong with that. Uh, somebody said the other day, um, I did this really quickly. She wasn't talking about me. She said about herself. And she said, I, I quite like it, what I did. Maybe I should paint more quickly. Perhaps that's the answer to my looseness problem. And I think that's probably quite true. Quickly and... Um, uh, what's the word, without too much forethought. So just go for it. Try and vary, when you're doing these florals, try and vary the shapes that you use and the sizes. And when you come in and do these small ones at the end, and you're going to be doing leaves in a minute, don't worry about letting them overlap. You can let them overlap. You know, you could put a cream coloured one in here, for example, and let it overlap. Okay, now I'm going to start with the green and you can do any kind of green. That's probably not quite green enough, a bit too yellowish. I think I'm going to come down here a bit to the bluer side because that will that, that that green will be probably better, and I'm I might just to make it easier for myself go to a slightly smaller brush. But if you do only have one brush. It's still possible, you can do it all. Sometimes it's a good idea to put the uh, stem in first and then just starting with the point, just press down lightly and lift up as you go towards the stem and you will get what you want and need. And you can use this green up until it dies on you if you want. Um, or you can always add a bit more of a different green to it. You don't have to wash your brush out. And once you get to this point, I always think what you need to do once you get to this point is start to look, if you're going to think about anything, think about just the, the, as if you were doing interior design, stop thinking about them as flowers and start thinking about them as interior design uh, modules, if you like. Um, and 
um, so that you get, I'm trying to get a, an olive green here, which I'm sort of missing. Missing the olive green. Uh, oh yeah, I always end up bringing one or two colors from the main 48 set. Once I get started, I realize I'm missing something. So here's, here's Olive and she needs a bit of this mixed in to make her darker. So that's good, that's fine. So we can bring her in here. And another thing is don't worry about going over the edge of the paper. You can, you know, if you want to, you can take a stem up here and just go right the way off. Like that. And if you want to make it darker, you could use the, um, these are the graphite colors. And if you add graphite gray, you're going to get a nice um, dark color that you might want to use in places. Um, we could have some a couple of dark leaves up here. And maybe one down here. Um, let me see. I think we need some lighter ones now down here. So we bring that down, turn this round. Perhaps we should have a few that are a bit bigger, maybe. I'm going to put these ones here like this. And uh, perhaps put some dark in the end. And at this point, um, Um, we might want to come back into the pinks with the centers. You have to forgive me if I stop talking sometimes a little bit because it's uh, not always easy to talk and paint at the same time. I'm sure you will understand that. So I prefer to do it this way rather than doing the voice over afterwards. Um, Actually, to be quite honest, because it's much quicker well, because it takes twice as long if you're going to have to go through it all twice. So we'll just spread this out a bit. I'm not trying to make anything look like anything if you see what I mean. Um, if you mix purple with green, you get quite a nice brownish kind of color. Okay. Uh, it wants to be a bit more orangey here. A bit more brown in the middle there, perhaps. So just, you know, play as usual, like what we say, 
I'm going to take my rigger because I feel as if my rigger is feeling a bit neglected, which is a shame because uh, I was quite excited to have this nice long brush. And um, what am I going to do with it? Let's connect these little seeds together. Put a few more down here, perhaps. Maybe over here we could put little berry type things. Just, just give plenty of texture. And the question is, when we've done this, are we going to do outlining on it? Because we could, and we haven't done that for ages. I'm not sure, um, should we? I think I might, I think I might, and I think what I'll do is I'll dry it and then come back with the pen. Now what we could do here now it's dry is we could just um, come in with some um, uh, with a, I like these Tombow pens which have got a thick and a thin line. I'm just going to check that this one's working okay. I think so. And um, we can emphasize the shapes to give it a little bit more interest because this is quite pretty. You have to forget about that though. You have to forget about the fact that it's pretty at this stage and you have to think, I'm gonna go ahead and, and improve it and make it more dramatic. So that's what we're gonna do. And the um, first thing I'm going to do is start off with the outlines to the leaves. And I always go away from the actual colour and, and do my leaves, give them my leaves outlines that don't match up with my painting. Not completely. They sort of might go quite close, but uh, I prefer it like this. But obviously, that's not the only way you can do it. You can do it any way you like. So we're going to just choose a few that are kind of, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, to put a few darks in, All right? And then we might also put some dark dots inside some of the centers. Just that might be the next thing we would do, emphasize those ones that I've already done, add to those. Um, and uh, let me see, we would want to perhaps do this one here, which is also quite dark. I think it's really quite important that you try to develop your own style. And it doesn't matter if you um, use somebody else for inspiration, but you, you're going to be looking for your own variation on the theme, aren't you? Um, so I've got Poetic here and I'm going to put some center veins into some of these leaves. Not all of them, I'm going to make them a little bit darker in places. This is quite a uh, handy thing to have because they they are very easy to use. And we can actually, if we wanted to, could use that to make some of these even darker, if you want. This one's bothering me up here. Um, 
This one wants to go back. There we are. And now we can put, if we've got some pink, let me see what have I got here. That's too bright. Uh, yeah, I'm going to probably end up resorting to good old paint. So I think what I'll do with these is I'll just do the, the veins in the centres of the flowers. Something like that. That's quite handy for doing that bit. Some darker pink here. So we put that in. My goodness, that was the cat coming in. Made me jump. Okay, so we can. What we could do, and this is all a matter of, you know, it's a process. We can do something like that, and maybe here too. No. Pink. It's all very exciting out there at the moment. I think some of these might be peonies. Brown in the middle of that one. No, this one's going to have to be a little bit more paint. Where was that? Where did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? I've lost it. Can't be that bad then, can it? If I can't see it. Oh well. I don't know where that went. Um, yes, I think we need some dark touches. I was looking for the dark green, which I had here before. Uh, is this this one? Pine tree green, yes. No, I tell you what I want. I want dark purple. That do? No, that's too harsh. And how about that blue? That'll do.
And then we can put another one here. And maybe one here. Maybe something up here. Right, and uh, maybe we should have some white. What do you think? Do you think something like a white center for some of these? This one looks like it could do with being outlined with green or something like it. Fill in some of these spaces with some green dots, for example. Put some down here, some over here, perhaps. And um, where was that purple? Dark blue color. We could put that in here. Let's do a few centers with some darks. Now we're getting to the point where we're going to say no, we're going to stop here because that's enough. More than enough, probably. Right. I think we're going to call that a day. So there we are, there's one all over floral pattern, which is a relaxing, um, pleasant way to spend some time doing some flowers that don't have to look like anything in particular. And um, using my Art Nouveau set, which is full of lovely colors, so you can enjoy that and uh, not have to worry about mixing your own colors. You can just take them straight out of the pans of the Art Nouveau set. So I recommend that. And um, yeah, well, I think that might make some nice bookmarks. What do you think? I'll cut it all up. No, it's not that bad, but uh, still. Anyway, I will let you go and I will see you again soon. So have a nice weekend. What's left of it? And uh, I'll see you soon. Bye for now, everybody. Bye bye.